Hello, this is the Yolo Box Extreme. Someone had commented wanting to see demos of the live replay ability, as well as custom multi views and the video follows audio feature, so I'll be showing those. So I'll start with the live replays. So replay is pretty straightforward. You can see here on our screen, you can select whichever video sources you want to have being banked for replays. So that can be your program out or any video source that you're bringing in. And those are going to be clean video sources, meaning any graphics or overlays on video sources won't be played back unless it's the program out being replayed, in which case they will. Um, this thing usually allows me to do at least six uh, sources at one time for replaying. You just have to take into account what all you have going on in addition to that. So if you're streaming to three different places, you probably don't want to have you know, six video sources for replay, and it'll give you a heads up letting you know, hey, that'll be too much on the processor. Um, but for the purposes of the demo, I am going to do four sources for our replay. So you select your sources, you have all of your settings right here. So the duration of the replay can be anywhere from one to 59 seconds. So you get up to a minute in total. I'm gonna set it to 10 seconds just for the demo. You can change the speed at which the clips are replayed. You can change the audio level of the clips, or if you'd like, you can mute them so you don't hear any audio from the replayed clips, you just get video. You can choose from 720 or 1080p. Frame rate, you can go from 20 frames per second all the way up to 60 if you would like. I'm gonna keep it at 30 just for this video. Mute other audio source during replay. So that's what, what, what that'll do is just when you replay, if you want to mute any live audio or any of your audio sources coming into the extreme, you can do that as well. Um, replay mode preferences, so these options here. Once you hit replay and you bank some clips for a replay, you can set it so it automatically launches into replaying those clips. Or you can set it so it just sets those clips aside and you can go manually queue them up whenever you'd like. Or you can set it to bring up a little dialog box right after you finished uh, clipping some replays and it'll give you a choice to do either of those two there. Replay logo, that's if you want to bring in any graphics or any logos or titles, etc., that you could have on top of the replayed video. I think by default they actually have one of their own, but you can replace it with whatever you'd like. Or you can just not have any graphics as well if you'd like. And then there's also an option to have an intro and or outro clip. So if you have a little animation or a little video or something, um, any saved video you have on either a flash drive or an SD card, you can load to automatically uh, pull up at the beginning or at the end of your replays. And then you can also have it fade in or out of your replay. So I'm going to go ahead and back out. Once we've got all of our settings selected, you're going to come up here and tap to enable replays. And so now the machine will be ready at any time if I want to go and hit that replay button it'll bank clips of those four different videos going back 10 seconds. Um, again, you do have the option to go to up to at least uh, a minute. So I'm just gonna move around here some just to get our replays ready. And so once I want a, a replay, I can come up here, I can hit that replay button. You don't have to be on the replay screen to do that. You can be switching, doing anything else. You can just come up and hit that button right there. And I have the little dialog box. Do I want to play it now? Do I want to use it later? So I'm going to go ahead and hit play now, and it's going to launch into those replays. So this is the program, and that now it's going to the next replay, which is from one of our cameras. And that one's about to finish, and it'll launch into the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and stop our replays now. I'm going to bring you back over here with me. So I'll tell you what. So here's our little clip bank of our replays. Notice these check boxes. So if you only wanted to replay one or two of those videos instead of all of them, you can just unselect whichever ones you don't want to play. And then when I come over here, when I hit play, 
it's just gonna play oops it's just gonna play only the ones I have selected and it'll just run through them sequentially down that little list in that bank so you have you know some options you don't have to replay every single clip you can just choose whichever ones you want to replay and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit that replay button another time this time I'm gonna hit use later instead of play now so it doesn't automatically launch into the replay and now when I bring you back over here you can see this is our second little bank of replays here's our first one these are still here at any point if I want to call those back up I can if I want to bank another uh, bank of replays I can and so these will be waiting here for me whenever I want throughout the course of this session or program I could wait 40 minutes and come right back here and pull up any one of these and replay them so if that's how the replays work it's a pretty nice uh, feature set Next up, I'm going to show off the video follows audio option, which is a really cool feature they uh, added in the Ultra some months back. So video follows audio is what it sounds like. It's essentially setting conditions for up to three different audio inputs or audio sources, saying when these audio inputs hit these levels, the machine will automatically switch to um, a video source or a multi-view. So... I'm going to go into our settings here for video follows audio. You can come over here. You can select which audio sources you want to bring in. So these can be anything, um, audio from any of your video inputs, or if it's a line in. I have an analog line in coming up here connected to that mixer. And then I'm also speaking right now into a little uh, mixer here. It's coming in over USB digitally. So I'm going to select those two audio sources. And so you can see right now on this little screen right here, there's um, a little table showing different conditions. So the microphone I'm currently speaking into, which is USB 2 here, I'm going to make it so that this one is detected. It'll take us to one camera. When the other microphone from that mixer is detected, it'll take us to another camera. And then I'm going to set it up so that if both of them are triggering at the same time, it'll go to a little multi-view. And so these options here, it's any panel over here. It can be a multi-view. It can be a video input. Um, you can select any of those and pair them to any audio source, which is pretty handy. Over here, you have your settings for sensitivity, um, how long at minimum it'll hold a switch. So you can set that to be half a second or I believe up to five seconds. Let me double check that. Yep, up to five seconds. And then you can set the threshold for how high the audio level has to hit before it makes that switch. And then you also have an option for speech detection, saying that it's only going to make that switch if it's detecting that it's speech and not just random noise. So I'm going to make sure our audio lines are both coming in fine. Test, test. test. So now I'm going to go back over to that screen. I'm going to enable. Uh, start video follows audio testing testing so you can see it's automatically switching now and if I get the other microphone now testing testing, testing. Now, now it's switching over to this shot, shot. And, and then I have it set so that if I let me take this overlay off if I speak into both microphones simultaneously it'll uh, switch to our little multi view testing testing, testing. One, one two three one two three, one, two, three. There we go. So the, uh, the uses for this are really cool. Essentially, this is just a way to have the box automatically switch a program for you. So say it's you, you have one or two other people with you, you want to film a conversation, or you're streaming a podcast or whatever. Um, you can have the Yola box set up to be streaming, and you can be recording as well. So you can record your program out, and then you can also ISO record individual cameras or video sources. While the two or three of you are speaking, the Yolo box will automatically switch views depending on who's talking, what audio lines are coming in. Um, and in effect, you sort of have like an automatically switched program. And then what's also really cool is if you're recording that program and if you're ISO recording, after the fact, if you want to edit things and you go, oh, well, at this one point, I would have liked it better, actually, if I had this camera shot, 
you can do that. You can take your already recorded program, but then you can, you know, splice it, uh, add your own, you know, custom edit to bring in a different shot whenever you want. So, yeah, it's a very handy feature set. So next I'm going to be showing um, custom multi-views and how that works. So let me bring up this little overlay again. So multi-views, uh, the way this is going to work, over here on your little bank of video sources, um, so you have all of your options if you want to bring video in, but then on the right side of the screen you have all these multi-views. So there's some presets here. All you have to do is click on them, choose whatever video sources. It does the work for you. You can adjust it to taste, the size of different things, the thickness of a border where you can get rid of it. You can add backgrounds, and backgrounds can be videos as well as still images, which is really nice. And you can see there's a few different layouts here. But if you come over here to this one where it says customized, this gives you the ability to basically custom build whatever um, multi-view you want. So I can come over here. I can add a source, so any of our live video sources right now. You can see I can move this or position it on the screen wherever I'd like. I can interact with these little elements here. Or if I'd also like, you can come in, you can dial in, you know, a specific uh, size or a specific angle to rotate it. So I'm going to make this one, I'll say that. So once I have that positioned where I'd like, I can come right back here, add another video source. I can throw that wherever I'd like. I can come over here, I can add another video source. I can throw that wherever I'd like. Um, this right here is actually a laptop screen capture I'm bringing in NDI. That's why there's a random video of a mountain here. Go like that. But these could also be saved clips or media. If you had one already in your video source bank, you could select that. If I want to duplicate a source, like this one and this one, you can bring it in multiple times. Um, if you want to adjust the layering, so say I want to bring something to the front and I want to send something else to the back, these two buttons over here allow you to do that. This little button is if you want to use um, PTZ control. So if you have a video source with a PTZ camera and you have it set up for PTZ control, when you're making this custom multi-view, if you want to be able to go in and adjust the PTZ pos positioning, you can do so from right there. And then you also see right up here, this is a button to add a background. So this can be an image or a video from a flash drive, an SD card. It can also be um, templates from online that YOLO Live has, or default templates they have. So background, I'll just choose a random video. Here, let me change that for something else. I'll do a video of my cat. So you can see that background video is actually playing, and so if I use that, it'll just keep looping that video in the background. So whenever I have a layout, you know, that I like, um, one other thing, you can crop things too, I forgot to mention that. So maybe you just want to crop certain things out of frame. You can do that if you would like. So once you have this all ready, I'm going to go up here, hit save, and I now have it down in my little uh, video sources bank over here, right here where it says customized. If I hit that, I can switch with it, and it's completely usable in a program. Um, something else pretty cool right here, if I go and hit the little settings button right there, oops. so I can rename that to whatever I would like just to have it labeled also if you would like you can duplicate it so now I have an exact copy of that uh, multi view and then if I would like I could also take that copy hit edit and I can go and tweak it and maybe get a slightly different version and you can see I have like six different videos here 
and the extremes handling it all fine and it'll hold on to it and have it all ready for me there so that's pretty cool uh, one other feature I guess I can show off now while I've got the opportunity as well is chroma keying so let's see let's get that so you can see I have a little green screen up on the table up there the way chroma keying works um, all you have to do is go into your little bank of video sources here and so for this camera, I'm going to hit that little options button there. And you see there's an option that says chroma keying up here. Click that. Come up here, enable key switching. And it's set to automatically work with either green or blue screens. Um, you don't have the option to fine tune that color. Uh, you do have a couple options, though, I guess, for how aggressively it keys stuff out. And how smooth you know it is so I'm gonna redo this and just get the default settings one second restore default setting there we go and so from this um, screen right here I can either select an image to just automatically have being keyed with that one chroma keyed source or I can leave it as is and that'll just be transparent and now while I'm switching, that video source will have that green screen keyed out. So I could either bring it in as a custom video overlay from the overlays tab. Scale that up. And so now if I want to bring that up, that key, uh, chroma keyed source, I can bring it in as a video overlay and it'll show on top of whatever I have currently switched to from our video sources. Or another option you have is to create a, a, a custom multi view with that chroma keyed video source. I'll show that really quick. Go to custom. Let's say I'll, I'll add our little video coming in from the laptop. And then now I'm going to add on top of that our chroma keyed video source. And I can position it however I would like. And there you see we have a green screen with a live video coming in from that monitor there, which is hooked up to this laptop in front of me. And that's coming out over um, NDI screen capture with NDI tools, which is a free suite of uh, software tools for working with NDI. Um, another really cool thing I can show as well, so if I decide that I don't want to chroma key stuff anymore, go back to that same uh, screen, disable chroma keying, now our source is back to normal. But say for whatever reason I wanted to chroma key it, but then I also wanted to have another version of it that I could switch to at any time that isn't chroma keyed all I'd have to do in that case is go to that little setting screen hit replicate now I have a copy of that video source so you can see it's the same exact thing it's just been duplicated and with our replicated source now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna enable chroma keying and so now I have that same exact video source, one with chroma keying, one without, that I can fluidly switch between whenever I'd like. Or I could make five different custom multi-views to have different uh, backgrounds being keyed in underneath the chroma keyed source. So there's a lot of options there. Uh, this is a very cool little box. I'll be making a couple more videos pretty soon showing some more of the features it it has it does a lot of stuff it's a lot more than just a live streaming box it's a full-blown um, video switcher and video recording device and it's all packed into a little portable tablet which is very cool so thanks for watching and we'll be posting more soon